Hello and welcome to my presentation, Design and Construction of an HCS Demonstrator Coil for a Superconducting Coil Magnet for a Partial Physics Experiment in Space. My name is Michael Stamm and I am a Senior Fellow at CERN. The work described in this presentation is carried out within the HDMS collaboration agreement between CERN and RC. HDMS is short for HCS Demonstrator Magnet for Space. Our other project collaborators include the University of Trento and TIFPA, who define the performance requirements and the constraints for the magnet design. The project has two goals. The first goal is to make a conceptual design for a toroidal magnet based on REPCO or a magnetic spectrometer operating in space. The second goal is to design and manufacture a demonstrator coil for the coil magnet. The presentation is split into two parts, where each part addresses our progress towards each of the two goals of the project. We start with the conceptual design of a steroidal HCS magnet for a magnetic spectrometer in space. The magnetic spectrometer determines the rigidity of charged particles by measuring the trajectory of those particles as they move through the magnetic field. The rigidity of a particle is defined as the ratio of its momentum and its charge multiplied by the speed of light. The bending strength is the perpendicular component of the magnetic field integrated along a particle trajectory. It determines how much the particle with a given rigidity deviates from its original path as it moves through the magnetic field. The more a particle bends, the easier it is to measure the bending. So a magnetic spectrometer with a higher bending strength is able to detect particles with higher rigidities. We obtain the average bending strength by erasing over the angle phi. The toroidal magnet for the spectrometer is required to have a, an average bending strength of 3 tesla meters. This is sufficient to measure charged particles with rigidities up to 100 teravolt. The shape of the magnet is chosen to be a toroid, mainly because a toroidal magnet has a total magnetic moment that is zero. A zero magnetic moment is, is necessary to avoid unwanted rotations or drifting when the magnet is placed in space and affected by the interplanetary magnetic fields. With an ideally zero ma total magnetic moment, the orientation of the magnet can be adjusted with magnet torques. The inner diameter of the toroid should be half a meter to make room available for detectors at the center. The outer diameter should be no more than two meters, since if the Toroid is too big, it becomes very expensive to launch into space. The straight segments of the coils are said to be 1 meter. The operating temperature is said to be 20 Kelvin, such that the magnet can be conduction cooled by a combination of sunshield and an electrically driven cryostat. Other requirements are that the structure should be lightweight and Sufficient space should be available for detectors between coils. The assumptions we made for the conductor for the toroid are that it uses HCS repro tape that is 12 mm wide and 100 micrometers thick. The engineering critical current density is set to 1200 ampere per square millimeter at a temperature of 4.2 Kelvin and a magnetic field of 20 Tesla. With respect to angle dependency, the number is for worst case conditions. For most HCS tapes, worst case conditions correspond to the magnetic field being perpendicular to the tape surface. To obtain the corresponding critical current densities at all temperatures and fields, we use the fitting function that is here shown in the plot. If the magnet is damaged from a quench, 
while operating in space. It might not be possible to repair it. Therefore, it is necessary to design the magnet to be self-protected against quenches. The coils are designed to be soldered metal insulation coils. The cable layout is shown in the figure. The cable consists of two HCS tapes with the Repco layers face to face and a metal insulation tape from stainless steel or a similar material. Solder is added to tape surfaces during the winding process and afterward the entire coil is heated to melt the salt. Such a configuration should make the coils self protected against quenches. The price for getting the self protection is very long charging and discharging times. However, since the magnet is meant to be turned on once and stay on indefinitely, a very long charging time is acceptable for this particular magnet. The trial magnet consists of 12 coil packs with two winding layers per coil pack. The engineering operating current density is 855 mPa square millimeter with a peak magnetic field of 11.9 Tesla. The total length of ATS tape required for the entire toroid is about 62 kilometers and the stored magnetic energy is 39.6 megajoule. The figure shows the magnetic field on the surface of the toroidal coils. The left figure shows the magnetic field on the XY plane. The right figure shows the bending strength for particle trajectories in this plane coming in from different angles. The maximum deviation of the bending strength is less than 2% from its mean value of 3 Tesla meters. On the inside and on the outside of each winding layer, there is a copper band attached to the first and last winding turn, respectively. The copper bands serve the purpose of transferring the current into and out of the winding layers. The mechanical structure for the coils is basically a thick plate with the shape of the coils machined into. A thin copper plate is placed on the top of the magnet former. The structural parts are made from aluminum to make the structure lightweight. The force on each coil pack is directed towards the center of the toroid with a strain of about 4 mechanisms. High Lorentz forces makes it a challenging task to design a sufficiently strong lightweight structure. With the chosen design of the coil structure, the equivalent stress is below 400 MPa everywhere in the coil and the structure. This is sufficient for this conceptual design. The structure between coils consists of an inner cylinder that absorbs the forces directed towards the center of the toroid, an outer hollowed out cylinder that keeps the coils in constant distance from each other, and some additional structure that prevents rotational displacement. This intercoil structure is designed in such a way that it can withstand the forces resulting from the quench of an entire coil. We now move to the second goal of the project, which is to design and manufacture a demonstrator coil for the toroidal magnet. The aim of the demonstrator is to properly test the technique of using copper bands as current leads and layer jumps. It is also to manufacture and test a medium sized soldered metal insulation coil. We especially want to test self-protection against quenches and charging times for such a coil. Finally, we want to test the design of the aluminum structure. For the demonstrator coil, the requirement for the HDS tape is to have an engineering critical current density of 400 ampere per square millimeter, with a temperature of 4.2 Kelvin and a magnetic field of 20 Tesla. Remember 
that have fit some rifle coils, the requirement was 1200 ampere per square millimeter. So of course, the demonstrator would not be able to produce the same magnetic field as the toroid. The demonstrator coil is a race track coil that is about one third the size of the toroidal coil in both height and radial width. The demonstrator coil will be a soldered metal insulation coil with the same cable configuration as planned for the toroidal coil. The engineering operating current density will be 700 ampere per square millimeter at 4.2 Kelvin with a peak magnetic field of 6.4 Tesla. The coil will be tested at several different temperatures in a range from 4.2 Kelvin to 77 Kelvin. The total length of ATS tape required is 1 kilometer and the total stored energy is 106 kilojoule. On the inside and on the outside of the windings, there are cover bands. The outer cover band functions as a current lead and transfers the current into the first winding turn over the entire circumference of the winding turn. The inner cover band transfers the current out from the innermost winding turn and functions as a part of the layer jump to the other winding layer. The magnet form of the coil is basically an aluminum plate with the shape of the coils machined into. Polyamide insulation encapsulates the coil layers. An elongated hole is located in the center of the structure to make space available for the copper layer jumps that electrically connects the two layers. The copper plate itself is placed with bolts. The G10 insulation box insulates the central copper box. The stress in the coil is everywhere below 88 megapascal. In the structure, the maximum stress reaches 259 megapascal, which is well below the yield strength of this material. The main steps for manufacturing the demonstrator coil actually includes the manufacturing of several coils. First, Several small solenoids with different configurations are built. Next, three coils in a series called the amazed coils are built. Here, amazed is short for Advanced Magnetic Spectrometer Experimental Demonstrator. The amazed zero is a dummy coil, which has the subconducting tape replaced by copper coated stainless steel tape. Its purpose is to test manufacturing techniques and confirm a few yet untested design choices. The amazed one is a single winding layer coil whose design will be the upper half of the full design. It is meant as a practice coil and lower performing tape will be used for this. The amazed two is the final demonstrator coil with the performance and description design described in this presentation. To summarize, the HMS project has two goals. The first one is to make a conceptual design of a toroidal ACS magnet or a magnetic spectrometer. The magnet consists of 12 racetrack shaped coil plaques. The average spinning strength is designed to be 3 tesla meter and the peak field is 11.9 tesla. The structure is made from aluminum to be lightweight. The second project goal is to design and manufacture a demonstrator coil for the toroidal magnet. The demonstrator coil is about one third the size of a toroidal coil pack. The coil is designed to be a soldered metal insulation coil to be self-protected against quenches. The current status of the project is that manufacturing of a series of small test coils has started and construction of the dummy coil will soon start.